So how do we go about making your character move around in MovieZoo? This uh, tutorial I've classed as tricky um, because it does involve a little bit of directing and a bit of uh, jiggery pokery as it is. Well I'm glad to say that the movement system, the character movement system in MovieZoo has been overhauled and we've now got some rather cool and easy to use features. And I'm going to take you through them uh, right now. So the first thing we need to do is head over to MovieZoo where we've got a blank set and create the character that we're going to make walk around. Who will we go for? Let's go for the skeleton. And I always prefer to give the skeleton some eyes because it kind of freaks me out otherwise. Okay. So this is the guy that we're going to make walk around the set. Just so we can see what's happening, I'm going to turn him around slightly. Give myself a better point of view. I'm going to get rid of this camera window too. So, movement is unlike many of the other animation passes in movies, in that it doesn't have a prepare thing. It doesn't have a prepare option because there's not really much that you can prepare. Um, instead, we'll just go straight to direct character movement. Now, again, like everything else, you get the little recorder window comes up and you get the control panel for the movement. This is the bit that's been overhauled because we now have a lot more control over how the character walks around the set in MovieZoo. And I'm going to show you those right now. Okay, so we've got three options. Normal, walking, only walk, or only run. The one that's currently highlighted, the normal walk, is the way that MovieZoo traditionally handled character movement. So if you've been a, a, a long time user of MovieZoo, this is the mode that you'll be more familiar with. Only walk and only run are new things. Let me show you the difference. I'm going to hit record and with normal selected, what this means is you get a big disc up at the character's feet. You move this disc around with the mouse and the character will follow the path that you draw. If the arrow goes red, the character will run to catch up. Let's get over there a little bit closer. You can see that you can also click on these icons on the disc, which will make the character do sort of on the spot movements, step forwards and step sideways, and what have you. That's the way MovieZoo has worked traditionally. If you put it on only walk and drag this thing around, then the character will never run. So you can see the arrows going pink, the character will only ever walk to its destination. And now I wish I hadn't drawn such a long movement path because we're going to be waiting ages for him to catch up. Of course the opposite of that is if you select the only run option right here. I'm sure you can guess what's going to happen when I press only run. If we click on only run then it doesn't matter where you move the disc. He'll charge around the set until he catches up with it. The cool thing is that if you have it switched on only walk and then decide oh come on hurry up you just hit only run and you can control whether the character is walking or running. Now the actual uh, code underneath MovieZoo that's uh, controlling all this movement stuff <clears throat> is as accurate as it can be and sometimes where you intend the character to end up is not where he will go. So you'll see sometimes that when the character gets to his final position there's a tiny little adjustment while MovieZoo catches up and that's because there's a whole bunch of complicated mathematics going on in the background and one day we'll get Dave to do a tutorial to explain all that. Okay, so that was the three options. We've got normal, which is based on distance. The further away you drag the disc, that will induce a walk or a run or you can force only walk and only run. Here's a cool new thing in MovieZoo. You can double click and the character will go in a straight line to wherever you double click. With the normal mode selected, if you double click far away, then the character will run to get there. Although, just like the sort of drag and drop sort of thing, if you click only walk and double click, then you'll force the character just to walk to that position. That's a really cool feature. The next thing I'd like to show you, and this only works so long as we hit stop on the recorder, is the move on the spot mode. This is going to no doubt please all the people in our forums who have asked for it, but if you take this on the spot and hit record, 
then you'll see that by dragging the disc around, it doesn't actually move the character from the spot at all. So the character will follow your arrow, but will never leave his spot. You can use that effect with a backdrop that's perhaps scrolling, and you can it's as if the character's on a treadmill. So of course, let's go to the timeline and see what all those sort of movement options mean for the character. I'll zoom out. Oops. I'll zoom back in on that. You can see all the movement options have appeared in the timeline. And if we rewind all the way back to the start, where's our skeleton going? Nice down there. We can adjust all these little options around and edit them just as we can any other event in MovieZoo. If you're not happy with any of the uh, any of the movement that you've recorded, this little bin icon right here will delete all the events on that track. Now that leads to some predictable results if your character is back at the start. So if we rewound the timeline all the way back to time zero and you hit delete, then you know the character will remain what, where he was at the start. If you've scrubbed through and you hit delete, then you get some small sort of shifts in that. But by and large, it will send the character back to where he was at the beginning of the movement. Okay, one other thing I'd like to say. Let's say you want to do some accurate movement. Okay, let's spawn an object in here, the pool table, for example. Let's just say that you want the character to walk right up to a specific point right at that pool table. Sometimes that's quite hard to do in movies, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to direct character movement, move all this out of the way. Um, we'll leave it on normal mode, we'll take off the spot. Hit record. No, we won't. We'll escape that actually. I want to rewind first of all. Okay, now hit record. And double click over here. Ah, right, so now you can see the problem. You can see that the character has intersected the pool table. How would we fix this? Well, we've got two options. We can either move the pool table or we can move the character. Let's pretend that the pool table is in amongst a really tight set and we can't actually move it. If we rewind and then attempt to move the character you can see that his motion path is now drawn and all you'd have to do is pull that character back a little bit so that now when you press play you can see that the character walks and stops at the right position. The final thing I'd like to show you is implication for setting an object as can be stood on. I'm going to rewind, I'm going to temporarily bring up the timeline and delete that movement that we just recorded for the skeleton. Let's go to the character and direct character movement. Let's force a walk. And let's make him walk right over the top of the pool table. The movement path shows you the character going over the pool table. But what's this? He walked straight through it. That's no use. If you want characters to walk on top of things, then in the object's properties, select it, right click, make sure you've got can be stood on ticked right here. Now, when we go to the timeline and press play, you'll see that the character hits the pool table and pops up on top of it. Okay, another thing I'd like to show you. Let's rewind, let's get rid of the pool table, and let's delete his movement. Is it characters walk based on the mood that they're in? There's a different walk cycle for happiness, angriness, being scared, being wobbly. You can also overlay other animations on top of a walk cycle. So, let's record this guy walking from left to right. I'm going to leave it as only walk, I'm going to hit record, and I'll double click over at this side of the screen. And he walks across. So that's the movement pass done, let's rewind. But then let's decide that we want to add on some character actions. So remember that characters are mood based in MovieZoo. 
He's already happy, that's the default state for all characters. So if we went ahead and recorded some character actions, like some poses, you can see that he enacts these poses as he walks. Let's rewind. Let's pull back just a little bit. So we put on some happy poses. Let's see what happens if we put on some angry poses. You can see that these are overlaid on top of the movement, leaving the character in an angry mood. Right, so the final question is how do you go about triggering different walk cycles, different locomotions and different moods? Let's um, rewind and I'll show you what happens. I'll take this guy, I'm going to delete everything that we've done so far for him. Okay. This guy's initial state is happy, as defined in the prepare character actions. Initial state down here is happy. If you were to change that to say angry and direct some movement, let's hit, uh, let's move this out of the way, record. You'll see that he has an angry walk cycle. But what if you wanted to string together? different moods uh, of walk cycles. Well, it's it's a slightly um, convoluted process, but it goes something like this. You would record, you'd set his initial state to be angry, and if I then wanted to change to an evil state, unfortunately I can't do that smoothly. The character has to stop, then I have to direct a character action. Um, Evil was a bad example, it's not loaded. Let's do scared instead. You would have to record the character going to the idle of that mood. Stop. Return to character movement. And record a new walk cycle. And there we can see that the character is now scared. So let's watch that in total. We set his initial state to angry. He walked across set in an angry fashion. Got to his destination. We then recorded a change to the scared idol. And lo and behold, the next time we triggered a locomotion event, he does so in a scared posture.